You've been had. If you think your favorite actors are doing all of their own stunts in your favorite action films, then you've been fooled by the power of the stunt double. Today, let's reveal which Hollywood actors had to use stunt doubles for some of their scenes. You won't believe how similar they all look. Will Smith and Clay Donahue Fontenot. I Am Legend was one of Will Smith's breakout action roles, especially as a sole lead. Will Smith plays scientist Robert Neville, a scientist who is the sole survivor of a man-made plague that turns people into mutants. In the film, Robert constantly fights off the mutants and performs elaborate action movements. But he wasn't fighting off those humanoid mutants alone. Clay Donahue. Fontenot was used for difficult stunts in the film like jumping in flips when Will just couldn't do it. Most of the time when the camera is turned away from Will's face and something super cool is happening, there's a pretty good chance that Clay did the stunt instead. Clay happens to be one of the highest paid stunt doubles out there, appearing in general action films and many Marvel films as well. Denzel Washington and Henry Kingy. Dodging fake bullets, chasing down assailants, and jumping through windows is not as easy as it looks, and even Denzel Washington would be willing to admit that. Denzel plays an ex-CIA operative named John Creasy, who takes a job as a bodyguard for a nine-year-old girl. She gets kidnapped by a gunman, and the main mission of the film turns to retrieving her from the criminals. Playing a bodyguard with a defunct career in the CIA required Denzel to convincingly play a character with the physical strength and skills that a high level of special training would offer. Despite doing his own choreographies, this would still be an impossible thing to do, convincingly, with the little time he had to train. For the harder scenes in Man on Fire, Henry Kingy took the baton from Denzel's hands. Henry is actually 11 years older than Denzel. He somehow managed all the action scenes way better than Denzel could ever dream of. Samuel L. Jackson and Tony Todd. Samuel L. Jackson's character Nick Fury has action scenes that are few and far between and usually not as acrobatic as the usual superhero fights on screen. His first brief appearance in the MCU was over a decade ago in Iron Man, and his main goal has always been to serve as the character who brings all the characters together for the Avengers. But since the completion of this task, there hasn't been very much for his character to do. Why would he need a stunt double? Well, even the most subtle action can still require a stunt double because action scenes have super tight choreography. And that's where Tony Todd comes in. He makes sure that all the shots with action in them are crystal clear. Halle Berry and Angela Merrill Halle took the cake for her portrayal of the titular Supergirl in 2004's Catwoman. Even with CGI training and choreography, a regular person would most certainly struggle to hit all the postured poses while also performing gritty, fast-moving action scenes. To keep the illusion together, Angela Merrill stood right behind Halle in the same costume, ready to do the jumps and kicks. Angela and Halle are the same height and have the same skin tone, so they look nearly exactly the same. We sure couldn't tell. However, for the most part, Halle takes credit for most of the action scenes of the film. She made an active effort to do most of the scenes herself, which reduced the need for her stunt double and special effects to help with most of the action. Michael B. Jordan and Kofi Yeadam. A fight scene at the edge of a waterfall is a truly insurmountable feat to take on. Even Michael B. Jordan, as athletically experienced as he is, needed the help of Kofi Yeadam for some of the scenes for the fight choreography and fast-paced action scenes. To play Killmonger, he had to train for months on end, seven days a week with his personal trainer, Corey Calliott. For the most part, the figure he had to build was just for aesthetic purposes. In most scenes where male actors are shown shirtless with impossible highlighted muscles, they are extremely unhealthily dehydrated. Being dehydrated can help define the visibility of their body on the camera. But for someone who needs to be in an action scene, 
This can be a huge liability. They have to rehydrate once the scenes are no longer necessary and limit their physical activity when they are in that dehydrated state. Kofi Yeadam's stunt acting helped to integrate the aesthetics of the action scenes with the actual action itself. Enjoying this tiny look behind the curtains of Hollywood? Click the subscribe button and notification bell to go even deeper. There's a whole lot more to see. Idris Elba and Nathaniel Perry. Idris played Heimdall in Thor Ragnarok, wielding a large magical sword. There were plenty of scenes where he had to fight for his life, but it may not have always been Idris himself. For that, Nathaniel Perry stepped in to redo all the action scenes so that they could be easily spliced together with Idris's original performance. That way, we don't notice that nearly half of the time, it isn't him doing all those incredible sword swings. Lupita Nyong'o and Mariah Hippolyte. Lupita had one of the most demanding action roles in all of Black Panther. For the final action showdown on the battlefield of Wakanda, a stunt double stepped in to do a lot of the running and jumping attacks portrayed. Mariah is actually a multiple-time stunt double for Lupita, and they're paired together for many of Lupita's action films. To be a stunt double is more than just physical ability. You have to actively look exactly like the person you're doing the stunts for. To look similar to Lupita, Maria had to prepare for the demanding role by changing her diet and exercise so that they could achieve a similar body and look seamlessly together on screen. Tessa Thompson and Tara Mackin. Tessa plays Valkyrie in Thor, Ragnarok. She had the chops to do most of the action herself, but there were some fictionalized action scenes that were nearly impossible to nail, especially the action scenes in which she wields two swords and when she jumps off of a CGI horse. These scenes require someone with immense training, acrobatic skills, and a strong core. Enter Tara Mackin. Tara documented the process of getting fit enough to do the scenes on her Facebook page. The Valkyrie are meant to be impossibly powerful mythical warriors with the usual stunt abilities to boot. Her routine consisted of some pretty irregular exercises for everyday life, but perfect for prepping to not only seem impossibly strong, but also unbelievably flexible. For the close-up shots that could fool anyone, the stunt double has to do the scenes and have the face of the actor digitally edited over theirs in post. This was likely the case for the convincing but admittedly much more difficult action scenes for a normal actor to be able to complete. Before she was chosen for the part of Tessa's stunt double, she had to train for months to get into Tessa's exact body shape to look the same as her in the suit. Don Cheadle and Kevin Arnold Don played James Rhodes in Iron Man 2. For a good part of the movie, he was wearing a super suit, making it all the better to switch him in with a stunt double when needed. Although they try to make the costumes mobile, they can still be incredibly tiring to even pretend to run in. All of the heat buildup can cause excessive sweating and make the actors tire even easier. To help keep up with the action needed and release strain on the actor, Kevin Arnold stepped into his own suit to play the more demanding scenes, especially the action scenes in which James Rose has the mask of his suit on. Regina King and Sadiqwa Bynum. Regina is one of the most versatile actresses in Hollywood, and in 2019 she tried her hand at her first action role for the series Watchmen. She plays Angela Abar, and for her first time in a leading action role, she blows it out of the park. Angela continues her role as a police detective during the day and becomes Sister Knight when the sun goes down. But we should all be a little suspicious of crazy action scenes where her masked character performs some impossibly sick moves and action choreography. The character Sister Knight performs martial arts and acrobatic moves whilst fighting off criminals nearly twice her size and there's more to this than just the power of movie magic and choreography. This is where Sadiqwa comes in, a stunt double with a background in gymnastics 
whose specialty is flipping. Sadiqwa and Regina have similarly muscular bodies and a strong build, so she didn't have to change her body very much to get the role. The entire bunker fight scene episode was shot with Sadiqwa, with only a few parts having Regina in them because of how demanding they were. Chadwick Boseman and Guida Silva Green. As the main character of Black Panther, Chadwick definitely had a lot of work ahead of him. For the most part, he trained to do most of his own stunts. Despite this, they still needed a stuntman for the more elaborate action scenes. In the fight scene between Chadwick's Black Panther and Hawkeye, Guida Silva Green stepped in to complete the triple kick choreographed for the scene. He also stepped in for scenes including any graceful acrobatic jumps and more elaborate kicks. The stringing up on green screens required to make these scenes possible can cause a lot of strain on an untrained person so a stunt double is required. Chadwick actually had three different stunt doubles at different points. He decided not to take the risk of harming himself and opted to leave the harder stuff to a professional. Including Gui, his other two stunt doubles were Daniel Graham and Annis Cherfa, John Boyega and Karanja York. John Boyega played Finn in Star Wars, The Force Awakens, a role that required quite a few fight scenes. While an actor can be trained to practice their own fight scenes, it just doesn't come off the same on cameras as it would with someone more experienced with the form required for certain fight scenes. For these, Karanja York stepped in to save the day, literally. For high-intensity fight scenes and even some of the fast-paced running scenes, Karanja filmed on the character's behalf. Wesley Snipes and Clay Fontenot. Wesley Snipes may be one of the most prolific black action actors of all time, but even he would need the help of a stunt double to pull those insane moves off. For Blade II, he was helped out by, once again, Clay Fontenot. They look surprisingly similar when they're both wearing the costume, and with a little help from the makeup department, they were basically twins on screen. Wesley prefers to do films with action in them that require his background in martial arts acting. In an interview with Android TV, he claimed that even though he did have a stunt double to help him out, he does most of his own stunts all by himself. Clay and Wesley are both trained in martial arts, so Wes doesn't have trouble fulfilling most of his own action scenes. He has a fifth-degree black belt in Shotokan Karate and a second-degree black belt in Hapkido. Along with this, he's trained capoeira, kung fu, jiu-jitsu, and kickboxing. When choreographing the fight scenes for films, he tries to incorporate these skills into his action movements in a way that looks seamless. Only the most risky of his stunts are left to Clay, Anthony Mackie and Aaron Tony. As Sam Wilson in Captain America, The Winter Soldier, Anthony had a more difficult job than most ahead of him. Falcon has a lot of scenes where he was to be in air, or at least appear to be. But this isn't done by just as many green screens as you may think. A lot of times the actor has to be propped on a pole in front of a green screen and maneuvered by stagehands, this can cause a lot of strain on the body and requires a lot of balance. For these scenes, Aaron Tony would be filmed instead, as well as for some of the fight scenes. They are eerily similar, and they have been working together for over a decade now. Jada Pinkett Smith and Natasha Hopkins. Jada played Niobe in The Matrix Reloaded, and anyone who worked on The Matrix needed a stunt double and she was not an exception to the rule. Even years later, it still has some of the most impossibly elaborate fight scenes in action film history. While Natasha Hopkins is an actress in her own right, she's also a trained stunt woman, and she stepped in to do part of Jada's more intense fight scenes. Tyrese Gibson and Larry DePaster. Did you know that stunt drivers were a thing? Even for some of the most insane race car scenes, a strained stunt driver has to take the wheel to make those perfect dramatic turns that would take actors years to learn. In the Fast and Furious series, Tyrese is portrayed as Roman Pierce, 
who's meant to be as nifty behind the wheel as a trained racer. Really, Larry DePaster, a stunt driver, was behind the wheel for a lot of those scenes. According to the Toronto Film School, most actors are not allowed to perform their own elaborate stunt driving scenes because it's just too dangerous if they aren't properly trained. If something goes wrong with the car and an actor is in it, it can put a wrench in the shooting of the entire film. In more scandalous news, Tyrese Gibson and Paul Walker were unknowingly in relationships with the same stunt double. Cindy Leon was working as the stunt double of Eva Mendez on the set of Fast and Furious and during an interview she made some crass comments about the two men on the cast that she slept with. Tyrese later revealed that it was true, although it was unbeknownst to them until it was all over. When they found out from each other, curiously, they both decided to continue their relationships with her. Zoe Saldana and Chloe Bruce. Zoe Saldana plays Gamora in Guardians of the Galaxy. As the character has green skin, it made it all the easier to swap her out with a stunt double at times to get that perfect action scene shot. When Zoe would get painted up and ready to shoot, Chloe Bruce was right on set with her getting painted and dressed up too, so they could easily look identical on camera. Chloe Bruce performed the majority of Gamora's jailbreak fight sequence as well as her first fight with Nebula. Stunt doubles don't always have to have the same skin tone, especially in this case, where the character being played has a non-human skin tone anyway. In cases like this, their skill and form are much more important than whether they can pull off stunts while convincingly looking like the actor in the same costume. Back in the 60s, there was no such thing as a black stuntman. Usually, a white stunt double would come and be painted darker to do the scenes. The most well-known and possibly the first case of a black actor refusing to have a non-black stunt double represent them was when Bill Cosby had to play Agent Scotty in I Spy and refused the stunt double he was offered. He demanded that a black stunt double, Calvin Brown, do his scenes instead. Lance Reddick and Dawan Johnson. Lance Reddick plays Charon in John Wick. Dawan Johnson helped out with some of the action scenes he had. The role wasn't quite as intense, but stunt doubles are used to get things exactly right. During the gunfight scene of the Continental Hotel, Karan is seen wielding a pistol to shoot down assailants and later improvising a melee weapon out of a shotgun when one of the assailants gets too close. This is likely one of the scenes that Dajawan was asked to double for because they required up-close combat that's sometimes difficult to achieve convincingly through pure choreography. Lawrence Fishburne and China McCoy. As previously stated, any role from The Matrix needed a stunt double. It all wouldn't be possible without those talented people doing the crazier stunts for them. Lawrence plays Morpheus in the film, and his stunt double China McCoy steps in for the more athletic scenes. For the dojo fight, the backflips, and more contrived stunts, China's experience with martial arts and gymnastics was absolutely crucial for getting the perfect shot with accurate form. Lawrence trained really hard to try and do most of those scenes by himself. In fact, the only move in the dojo scene he had to do for Lawrence was the one-handed flip. Although Lawrence wanted to do most of his own stunts himself, for the first film, most of his stunts were performed by China. For the next films, China was less present as Lawrence took on the tasks for himself. People assume that because of the training stunt doubles have, they won't have any struggles with the stunts they need to perform, or at the least, they will be at much less risk of getting hurt. China doesn't particularly believe this is true. He shared a story with MatrixFans.net about the time the producers decided to hire their own Australian stunt doubles to shoot the bathroom wall scene. They had someone else play Morpheus, and he was set to have the day off. But later in the day, they called him back onto set because the stunt double they hired for Morpheus busted his head because they made the wall for the set way too thick. However, 
He managed to do the scene and leave without a scratch after they shaved the wall off a bit. Jimon Hounso and Karanja York Dimon Hounso played Korath in Guardians of the Galaxy. He had to do an intense diet and workout just to look perfect for the role and be fit enough to shoot certain scenes. However, there are just some things that come from experience and can't exactly be achieved through training. Another repeat offender here is Karanja York, who was used sparingly as a double for Demon's fight scenes. Click on this next video and get an even better look at who your favorite actor really is behind the scenes. What would you like to see next? Let us know down below.